Daf Mem Amud Aleph in the bottom of the page. We're going to review things that we saw last week because these things I, Bo Hashem, have managed to study better with my Chavrusa, Bo Hashem. I get the numbers crunching. Yeah. So we are in Mem Amud Aleph in the bottom of the page. Yeah, the Asrid of Yuda. We learned in the Mishnah that when a person uh, sells when a person sells uh, wine to his friend, yeah, if you sell wine to your friend, then one sixth goes into the barrel itself, gets absorbed in the clay, and therefore, yeah, you should expect that. Actually, then we didn't speak about selling, but yeah, Rabbi spoke about oil. The Maisa, it is normal for the for the wine, naturally, for whichever reason, to get absorbed in the barrel. And therefore, when you have a liter of wine, eventually, probably at the end of the year, you're going to get one-sixth less. You'll remain with one-sixth less unless, again, you tar it very well, which, again, doesn't always help. Right? Review the Chachomim. Now let's see the story that uh, gives us a real-life example of that uh, halacha. The asset of Yudam. In review this place, we are the second line from the bottom of the page, the penultimate line of Memo Mudalef, Bav Metziah. In each and every dana, dana is a big barrel, they would place, they would always pour into it 48 smaller jugs, and each jug is called kuza. Yeah, so the 48 kuzi in one dana, each dana contains, each one big barrel contains 48 kuzi. That is so nice. Now, and Azil Dana Bashita Zuzi, each Dana itself would be six Zuzim, would cost six Zuz, which means one Zuz would be how many? Would be eight Kuzim, right? Each unit of eight Kuzim would be one Zuz, right? Because 48 divided to six is eight, divided to eight is six, very nice. So now this was sold by the wholesaler. That's how the wholesaler went, okay? As Rashi says, the Moisa Botzir, at the time of the Botzir, the time of the uh, harvest. Okay. Now, Rav Yuda, according to some people, he was a wine dealer himself. Some say that the Rach says he's the one who gave instructions to the, to the, to the wine uh, merchants. What did he do? Let's say he was himself the person who's buying from the wholesaler and selling the retailer or the people. And Paris Ravi, the Shita Shita Bezuza. Rehuda changed it, obviously trying to make a profit. So instead of, of actually selling eight per Zuz, right? In the original, eight kuzi, let's imagine of eight units of eight kuzi for one Zuz, he would sell six kuzi for Zuz, right? So therefore, at the end of the day, the entire dana of 48, Bahim would be eight Zuz, right? In other words, he wanted to make a profit of six Zuzim. Instead of, instead of the entire hobby, six Zuz worth, he would sell it for eight, right? Because he would say it's six and six and six and six, six times eight, right? And there were eight units of six kuzi inside. And yeah, at the end of the day, he should really make a profit of two zuzim. Six times eight is 48. Oh, so eight zuzim is what he would make, which means not really eight. He would break even at six and then make two zuzim profit, six with a difference of another two, eight zuzim, yeah, two zuzim, would be his salary, not his salary, would be his profit, would be his gain. So that's so far not so good, actually. Why? We already know, because we learned it before, that he's trying to make a profit of a third. To make a profit of a third is too much. We're going to learn enough of that next barrack, starting in Hanukkah, I hope. Barrack Azov deals with underpricing and overpricing, and I know, don't worry, you're going to get a lot, a lot of that over your heads. And therefore... The kuzi here is making a profit of a third. However, 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 things don't really work as we thought they would work. Doubt loss in the shisa, bashisa. If you start breaking that dana of 48 into units of six, let's look at units of six kuzi. Kuzi are the smaller unit, yeah? Each, each big one contains 48 small ones, six, six, six. Doubt loss in the shisa, bashisa. Now you have six times six. So the first six units of kuzi were sold for 36. It were, so, were sold for six, excuse me. Six times six, 36. Mazel Tov, he broke even. He, right? He actually bought it for six. The, 30, the first 36 kuzi, he sold for six. He broke even. 
Now how much is left? 12. How much is 12? It's two units of six each. Each one for a Zuz. Now he's about to make a profit of two Zuzim. Uh-oh. That would have been very nice, but it's not the story. Pasha Really, there are 12 Zuzim that are left to be sold. And as I say, make a profit of two Zuzim. However, no, no, no. Dal Tamanaya, because Shtusi, you have to take away eight. Ay, 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 ay. What a loss. Because why? Shtuti, it's a six. A sixth of the entire barrel goes into the absorbed into the walls of the chavis of the dana, and therefore, really, you have to take eight because eight is a sixth of forty-eight, and therefore, now how much you have, have left out of twelve? Pashlu, pash is left. Yeah, Abo, he only has four. That's not such great news. Why? Because he only has four kuzi, which is even less of six kuzi. So instead of making one zuz of six, he's making now two-thirds of a Zuz. At the end of the day, he's only going to make, instead of two Zuzim, he's going to make two-thirds of a Zuz of a profit. Now, that's very nice and honest of him, but it's too little. Pregnant, why? Why is he making such a low profit? What for? Shmuel says, It says you're not allowed to make profit larger or higher than a six when you sell things that everybody needs. When you sell foods, when you sell things that are staples, that everybody needs, that are needed by everyone, necessary, should make more than a six. But a six, you are allowed to make. So how much should he be making? One zoos, right? He bought it for six. He should make seven, meaning one, one extra. So why is he making less than one zoos extra? Why only two-thirds of a zoos? And says the Gemara, don't worry about him. He's making a side profit. He's making the profit of the barrel itself that stays by him. And the barrel is also including the six uh, Zuzi. Aha. And the barrel stays there for life. He's going to use it again and again. He's going to use it for many other things. He's going to use it to store all his uh, stamp collection for all kinds of things. And also the Shamraya. He also has the Shmorim. Oh, this you have to know. I just saw now the Rashash. The Shmorim of wine, as I told you, Shmorim or what? Sediments. The sediments of the wine are actually useful because you can reuse them. Yeah, they're in the bottom of the barrel. You can reuse them to make something called Temid. Temid is a drink which is basically re <laughs> recycled wine. They take the shmorim, they kind of like revive. There's a question, make a lagofen, whatever. Yeah, so Bekitzer, he, he, he gained that. So that besides, he's not such a miskin. He only made two thirds on wine because he's left with the gulfi and the and the thing, the, the, the sediments. Ah, if so, nafish leitz famish tus. Ah, if so, there's more than a six. <laughs> Because obviously, right, he was only a third of a Zuz shy of, 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 of the real good Rebbech of a Zuz. Now he has a whole barrel, he has Shmolim, he's making more than a six. That's not allowed, that's overpricing. How come he's making so much more money than he's allowed to? Answers the Gemara, Ikatarche with Mebaz and Yoso. No, 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 don't worry. He has other expenses. One expense is his own Tircha, you know, his own work, he invested work in it, work and time and, uh, you know, exertion. And Mabel Zanyosa. What's Mabel Zanyosa? There are two explanations. Says Rashi, either Zanyosa means Karzanyosa Karoz, advertising. You know how much advertising costs? A lot of money. Karoz, what's a Karoz? An announcer. You wanted to get a person to announce a square up and down the streets of the market. And that person would, uh, that's the first advertising agency in history, maybe. Yeah, Pil Sumanes next week. So now basically, or others say Baal and Yosa is like Beres. What's Beres in Hebrew? Anybody knows? Yeah, the tap, the faucet. Yeah, in other words, it costs a lot of money to pay a special mumche, special expert that would actually insert that Beres, the proper kind of, of plumbing. That's the first plumber. Yeah, the, 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 the Beres, which is like a, a cane, which would be very sophisticated for those days to have it nicely done inside the chairs. It's very hard. You make a hole in the clay is really hard without it dripping. It's very hard. I don't know how they did it. Yeah. So Lamaisa, he has expenses. So Lamaisa, at the end of the day, with the gain over here and the loss over here, he hit it right on the mark and he made exactly one Zeus extra, which is a six, which is a kosher way of. Sorry. I, I... One second, please. Yeah. A minute. I'm going to continue soon. One second. But <laughs> continues the Mishnah. If the oil was mezukak, was purified, was pure, 
Ain't a yotzi lo shmorim, then he's not supposed to take out the shmorim, he's supposed to sell him a what? A, um, sorry, that's not about the one who sells, that's about the one who was the shomer. The shomer, the person who guards the shmorim, who's looking after the, the shemen, if the shemen is well purified, then he doesn't have to take out the shmorim and he has to just give him back the purified one, the chule. What's a the chule? The chule goes on the story what happens if the chovis is old, yeah? Let's say the chovis is an old kind of barrel, okay? Because it's an old barrel that, or an old jug of oil that already absorbed before, so then you, you're not supposed to uh, to actually um, deduct any kind of shmolim, or excuse me, of absorption, because an old barrel doesn't absorb. An old barrel doesn't absorb. You gave I, I gave my oil to you, the shomer, one liter, 10 liters, I want to get them back exactly without funny stories. Why? Because if your barrel is old enough, then it does not absorb any new oil. It's impossible, Frag the Gemara, that the jug of oil would not absorb some oil, a little bit at least. We're talking here about a jug of oil that is inside tarred. It is coated in the inside with tar. It's tarred. Because it's tarred, it does not actually absorb. Both Rashi and Tosis, in similar ways, are sort of raising an eyebrow, because we saw before, if you remember, at the beginning of the Gemara, the tar is not such a great sealant. Yeah, it's actually better to use wax. And now you're telling me, because it's tarred, the no, no drop of oil goes in? So basically, the answer is, here we're talking about old ones. Because the jug is old, and because it's old, it already absorbed a lot of other absorptions. It's already full of other bleoys. Of, of other oil, plus the fact it has zephyrs, it has tar, that's good enough. Secondly, answer says that was wine, and this is oil. Oil, apparently, yeah, for oil, the tar is better than for wine, apparently. Oil doesn't go in so much, yet yeah, contains contains itself. Wine, I guess, si sips in more. Abai Omar, Abai says, It says, Abai, no. Even if, the, even if those jugs are not tarred, given the tone, tone, because they already have absorbed, the head absorbed in the in the past, they're already full of bleos, they're full of absorption already, absorption center for the Olim Chadashim, it's full of oil already, the walls of the jugs and therefore they don't absorb anymore and therefore if you were mafkid in an old jug, in your friend's old jug, you may supposed to receive back exactly the same amount as you have deposited very nice, now we're coming to the main sugya of today fascinating sugya <laughs> Fine. Rabbi Yudah Oimer, two dots. You have the two dots? Two dots the hood. Rabbi Yudah Oimer. Ah, for Moichel, Shemen, Mezukat, Lechaveroi. Oh, that was the end of the Mishnah, and I almost got it right when I read the Mishnah. I was almost there. Baruch Hashem, I got it better now. Baruch Hashem. A person who sells oil to his friend. Again, let's, re let's remind ourselves of the content of the Mishnah. Okay? The Mishnah spoke about depositing, not about selling. If I deposited, right, let's say oil or wine, yeah, by my friend, and it's mixed up with his oil or wine, and the amounts are a bit funny, but we do know that I, let's say, I gave him 100 log, yeah, which is about 50 liters or so, yeah, and now I expect it back. I'm supposed to get for every 100, there's a deduction, I'm supposed to get only 98 and a half. Where's the one and a half? That is in the Shmorim. We're not talking here about absorption. We're talking about the sediments. In other words, the sediments are in the bottom of the barrel. They slowly sink, as I said. Now, yeah, if I deposited by you oil that is there is murky, that is cloudy, that has the, the sediments, yeah, I'm not supposed to get now something that is clear. Where is the other uh, percentage and a half? That's the Shmorim. That's what the Mishnah said about the Mafkid. Continued Rabiuda and took it one step further courageously. Rabiuda says, and I'm reading now inside again in the Gemara, Let's say a person sells his friend oil that is pure, mezukak, all year round. Soon you'll see what that means to say. Which means, let's say I see a jug of oil and it looks nice and pure. And beginning to get into the Gemara, and it's a bit of a fake thing. You know, it looks pure because it looks very nice, golden and pure. 
where are all the, you have to listen carefully now, because that's the basis. I'm not North Korean yet, but I'm, I'm avoiding North Korea, because if you listen carefully to each and every detail I'm telling you now, uh, you're not preventing a lot of, you know, technical questions, to put it mildly. Let's say you go to a friend's store, you go to a friend's olives, olive oil store, you know, we all go to one, right? So now you see this big jug of 100 log, and you say, wow, that's a heck of a nice shaman. You're not really finding out if it's if it's filtered or not, if it's purified or not. And really, and nobody's lying here. Everybody's very yashar. The, the seller is Rabbi Sral Salanter, okay? Now, in the bottom of the barrel, there are sediments as expected. Okay, now you tell the guy, you tell the mocher, wow, I want this shaman. I want this jug, big jug of oil, yeah? It's almost, uh, you, you know about this holiday? You've heard of Hanukkah? Hanukkah, right? There's whatever, candles and stuff. Oh, oh, very nice. So now, yeah, yeah, there's, so now, yeah, <laughs> the Jewish star, exactly, the Jewish star, yeah. So now, let's you go to your friend's store, yeah, and you want to buy a lot of oil at the beginning of the year. He has this big jug of oil that looks very nice and pure. Maybe it's even clear, okay. In the bottom, there are sediments, and you say, I want this 100 log container, not that this container, I want 100 log of that oil. Okay, very nice. Now, throughout the year, you have like a Rav Kav. Those of you who've been here long enough, remember Chofshi Chofshi, you have a daily pass. You have a yearly right to slowly and surely consume the Shemin before Hanukkah, before the Sabbath, or you just want Italian Mediterranean diet. You start a Mediterranean diet, you need a lot of oil. So every time you go to this guy's shop, he scoops up, yeah, he takes some oil until you reach the bottom of the barrel. And it's all very nice. Says Rabbi Yudha, if at the end of the year, when I sort of finished my entire hundred, he only gave me 98 and a half, I cannot take him to court. And even if I do, I lose. But I'm going to scream and shout and say, what? What do you mean? I wanted this pure oil. Yeah, and it looked so pure. And he says, no, this oil had sediments in the bottom. And you know what? You never spoke about it. And other, you didn't say, you didn't specify and said, I want pure oil. You said, I want that oil. Guess what? That oil is regular oil. That has sediments in the bottom, like all other oils. I'm not a liar. And therefore, at the end of the day, or excuse the pun, at the end of the year, yeah, don't cry to me and complain if at the end of the year you only got 90, 98 and a half. Why? Because at the end of the day, you can't get all the quantity and all the quality. You want high quality oil? I gave you throughout the year the high quality. Yeah, I the, the sediments they stayed in the bottom, and I gave you good oil. You know it was so good, mister, because all the garbage was in the bottom. Now, yeah, you want to take the garbage. Let's also discuss later. later. You can't uh, de de demand for me 100% oil that is also completely pure. That says Rabbi Yuda. It may seem simple to you, but it's actually big machlekes. And only Rabbi Yuda says that. Uh -huh. In the Mishnah, Sansa Chachomim argue. What they're arguing about is exactly with what we're going to learn today. Merz Hashem. And it's commercial. Time. Yeah. And the weather. And the sports. Yeah. Right there. Okay, Rabbi Yudah Oimer, Omar Abaye. Abaye now comes to explain Mechlokes Rabbi Yudah and Tanakama, because what does Tanakama say? Tanakama kept quiet while Rabbi Yudah was talking, which means Tanakama says no. According to Tanakama, they say no. The customer is always right. America style. Why? Because really, yes, you can demand, I wanted pure oil, and I want 100% what of the, of, the, of the amount of pure oil. How is that? Says Abaye. What's in the Kudas Mechlokes? What's the point of Mechloikah the bone of contention between Rabbi Yuda and Chachomim? Omar Baik, Shetim Tzaloimar, when you really find out the real reason behind Abaye and behind Rabbi Yuda and Chachomim, what is really their issue? Shetim Tzaloimar, Ladiver Rabbi Yuda, Muta Le'arev Shmorim. According to Rabbi Yuda, if I sold you that jug of oil that I spoke about, the big one, throughout the year, I'm allowed to stir up the Shmorim. The Shmorim are in the bottom, it's not a sheker. I'm allowed to actually, as the year goes by, I'm not supposed to dafka sell you the pure one. I can I can stir up the shmolim from the bottom, let them sort of go in a whirlwind, you know, like a whirlpool above 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 ground, yeah, and scoop up oil which is murky with the shmolim. I'm allowed to do that, as I just explained, because when you said this oil, you did not specify pure oil. No, you didn't. Had you said, I want 100 log of pure oil, and here's my big fat lawyer next to me, then good. He specifically said, I want the pure oil, good. But if you don't say pure, said this oil, 
speak like a three year old, you're not being clear. Okay, so this oil, honey, does contain uh, 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 sediments in the bottom of the barrel. I was nice to you and I scooped out clear oil, but it could have, I could have every time scoop after murking, not murking it, making it murky and cloudy and getting the shmore from the bottom to the top and send it to you that way, right? And the Gemara is going to explain more. Chachamim say, no, you're not allowed to mix the shmorim. If the oil looked clear, it should stay clear and be clear and should be sold as 100% amount and clear quality and quantity. Now the Gemara is going to detail, I'm being, I'm really spoon feeding you because the Gemara is going to say it now anyways, explains the Gemara. According to me, they allowed throughout the year, as you sell the oil, you're allowed to mix and stir up the oil with the shmorim, excuse me, stir up the sediments and sell murky oil with sediments. The Hainu Taima and therefore the Mechabel. That's why the loss of if you didn't do it and you kept selling pure oil, but you know, waiting to you in the corner in the bottom of the of the barrel is the unpleasant surprise of one and a half percent, you're supposed to absorb them, to absorb the, the loss of the shmorim, who, the lokeach, the customer, the omer lay, because the seller can tell the buyer, I boy le ruvilach, if I wanted to mix it up for you and mix the shmorim, the existing shmorim, stir them up, bring them up to the surface and sell and scoop together with them and sell you murky, milo arvilach, wouldn't I be able to mix it and sell you mixed with, with the sediments? Yes, I could. Halachically, says Rav Yuda. Ashtanami, now too. Kabil. Yeah, go jump in the oil in nice language. Accept it. I sold you pure. No, I sold you pure. I could have sold sold you murky 100%. Not, not 100%. The, the entire, when I say 100%, I don't mean 100% pure. I mean 100% of the amount. I could have sold you the entire 100 log. Let's 100 log to make it clear. The whole 100 log, yeah, I could have sold you what? Murky. Now I sold you pure of what? Of 98 and a half. Accept it. In other words, says Rabiuda, what we would say in nice English, Q or Q. The proper Q. Quality or quantity. Can't get both, honey. Sorry. Can't get both oily. You can't get quantity and quality. Decide. Make up your mind. Because I don't have to give you pure quality. I can give you murky. Instead of that, I give you pure. But that, that has its price at the bottom of the barrel. And now the bottom of the barrel continues, contains 1.5, 1, 1. which is not yours. Or maybe I can give it to you, but thank you. Just, uh, just tomorrow, which, by the way, has nothing to do with. Frank Digmar, and I'm not listening to your questions yet because we have two questions of Digmar, and then we have your questions. Thank you very much. It's just half a minute of North Korea. Frank Digmar, the lay malay, Frank Digmar, the choira, we up until now, the way I described it to you and I was right, we see this kilo two options. You have two equal options, and justice for all. You can either have quality or quantity, and they're both as good. The, yeah. At the end of the day, they're both uh, parallel. <laughs> but depends who you are. Are you a customer? Are you are you a balabais? Are you a personal consumer? Or are you a retailer buying from the wholesaler? Do you have a Macaulay? Do you have Osher Hand? Are you buying it from the big old shop? Or are you a regular guy who wants to use it for Hanukkah? The lay malay, Frank Digmore, let the customer tell the seller, he all of the yeah, if you leave, really, yeah, lay interesting. He's talking to me about himself in third person. Had you mixed it to me, I would actually have preferred it, have a misdabinly. I could have sold it in my shop as murky oil, which is good, which is yosher. In other words, I sell oil. I want quantities. I want quantities, and people don't always care so much. Yes, I prefer the lower quality and higher quantity. I just want to make money. And therefore, that I could have sold if you, if you, you thought you'd be such a big favor, you're giving me pure oil and giving me less. You know, it happened to you ever with the uh, local workers in this country? They don't do like uh, the, the last 10%, it happened to me once or twice. The last 10% of the job they don't do, and then they say, I gave you very extra good work. <laughs> what do you mean? I want the entire wall painted and don't leave, you know, 10% unpainted and then tell me I did a terrific job and the best, the higher quality. I need the whole wall painted. That's the sort of logic over here. It's not the same as a Macaulay owner, as Osher Ad owner. I would have been able to sell high, more one TT and less quality. Ashta, now you think a big chocham? My avid lay. What will I do now with all the foolish one and a half percent of pure sediments in the bottom of the barrel? I can't just 
I can't just by itself, I cannot sell in my shop shmorim, shmorim are garbage. Yeah, I can't sell them by themselves. So mainly your high quality is really a loss. Oh, correct, Toysvus. Uh, you're, you're jumping the queue, but I forgive you. Nice. Um, crystallizing your question. Fractal says, why? You can't sell shmorim by themselves. Why can't you buy shmorim and mix them with the oil? Lechor, for a good Macaulay owner, it's good and it's even legal to buy some garbage shmorim, mix them with the oil and have higher quality, uh, higher quantity, quantity, and sell them in right, nice, murky oil. Yep. Says Toysvus, here we're talking the ready sold. I'm doing a Baruch Hashem in a Shemaim. I saw, I was in Yerushalayim in the Shul and I saw there in the uh, Shem de Meir in one second. We're talking about a sale that's prolonged, that, that's that's extended throughout the year. This is at the end of the year. I sold all my oil already. So now pure Shmarim, I can't mix them with the oil because the oil is already in the tummy of all the people that bought from me. Or maybe they're Hanukkah candles. Yeah. So me mail a Gmar, it's not equal. It's really better for me to have lesser quality and more quantity. And says the Gemara, no, we're talking here about the Balabais, a regular customer who obviously is not trying to make a quick buck or some lolly. We're trying to talk, we talk here about who? A person with the Balabais, who's a regular customer who wants to offer his own usage in the salad or in the Hanukkah lichten. And therefore, what? He prefers Sila, Salul. He wants pure oil. And therefore, he says, no. I really prefer the Salul one. Ah, you prefer the, you prefer what? You prefer really the clear, purified one. Very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. If that's what you want, it has a price, mister. Now you're basically back to square one. As we said all the time, you have two options. Either you want the Salul, but you didn't specify it. You didn't specify you want the Salul. And therefore, let's again repeat Rabuda and then I'll listen to your questions. But again, Rabina says as follows. When I go to the store and I see this pure oil over here, yeah, okay, tea oil, who cares? Yeah, I see the pure oil, which looks pure and is not necessarily because in the bottom of the barrel there are sediments. Rashi does stress, by the way, Baruch, that they're in the bottom. They cannot be seen uh, through anywhere, but they're assumed to be there. And therefore, I would like to have this amazing uh, clear oil, but it didn't specify it. Says Rabbi Yuda, the, 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 the wholesaler is allowed to sell murky oil and every time make it murky and cloudy and scoop from the bottom of the barrel and sell all 100% of it. I didn't do that, says the seller to the customer. I was nice to you and I gave you pure oil, which you do prefer. Don't tell me otherwise. You want pure oil for your Hanukkah candles. You want pure oil for your nice Greek Italian salad, right? It has a price. Sorry. But you wanted this barrel and you want pure? That, in other words, means 98 and, and a half and not one and a half. That in the bottom, that's the price of our qualities. Less quantity. Last time I checked on those in Kita Dalit. Room for questions now. There is going to be a short round of questions. Another question on Rabbi Yuda. It's not a great place to stop. It's just being nice to you. And then we're going to continue to after your questions. Yeah, I think Alan was first. Yeah. All right, let's continue. It says with more, another question the Gemara has now. Frag the more another question. Okay, said it. Frag the Gemara. Yeah. Belay Malay. Line starts with the Nichale Betzila. Frag the Gemara, another question attacking Rabbi Yuda. Why can't the customer now tell the seller, you keep telling me, oh, there are two options, there are two options, say thank you. I went for the option of the pure, right? And I could have stirred it and sell you murky. I didn't. Now you get the murk, you get one and a half percent less. Why can't the customer retort back and say, me Deloy, obviously, I came here time and again and again and again, and I like what you said, Yaakov. Every time, somehow, when you poured me and scooped up the oil, it was always pure. I was given, that made me understand that, achuli achelsli, you were moichel the other options. You're mevater. It's true that you have in the back of your mind the option, uh, I could have sold you murky, say thank you, I'm selling you the clear one, and therefore, at the end of the day, suffer the loss of one and a half. But let me say, every time, I came here 12 times once a month, I came here 100 times for every liter. I don't know. When I came many times. Every time it was clear. So, Mimele, don't your actions speak louder than words that we are talking about? Clear 100 lug over here. So don't wait for me at the, at the corner, as we say in Hebrew, and corner me at the back and tell me, ah, oh, the one and a half are not yours. The, aren't you, Michael, that other maslul, the other option? Answer the Gemara. That could be very nice. However, the 
Rabbi Yudah follows his own logic. Rabbi Yudah does not believe in Mechila. Ooh, what does that mean? Doesn't Rabbi Yudah believe in the Day of Atonement? Have you heard of the Day of Atonement of the Jews? They don't eat the whole day? Yeah, go. In other words, does Rabbi Yudah believe in Mechila? Rabbi Yudah does not believe in Mechila. Meaning, explains Rashi. Rabbi Yudah says that if we have a regular business dealings, we don't assume people are moichel unless they verbalized it and said it before. And that's the story over here. We're going to give an example and come back over here. Just because I acted and a scooped and a schmooped, and every time it happened to be clear, as long as they don't say to you, listen, Rabbi, I am selling you the clear oil, and I'm not taking the option of the murky, as long as this wasn't said, that the seller is always right. De Tnan, as we saw in the Mishnah, a rather famous Mishnah in Baba Basra, which we've seen before. Now, before we start, let me teach you the Ultan of the day, the word of the day in the Yulpan. What does the word semed mean? Semed. Semed chemed. What's semed? Semed is a pair, a couple. Semed chemed is a couple that's a perfect couple. Semed means either in the times of the Gemara, a double yoke, not the one of the egg, the yoke on the head, yeah? The double yoke of two animals walking together, plowing together. Semed can also mean the two cows. <laughs> Which one is more expensive, the car keys or the car, yeah? So now, let's say a person is telling you, I want to buy a semed from you. <laughs> Is he talking about two big, fat, good working bulls? Or is he talking what about the actual yoke, which is worth a fraction of the price? So there's a whole story about it. Let's just see part of the Mishnah. Let's say a person sold his friend the Tzemed, which means the yoke alone, and the yoke is not with the Bokor. It does not automatically include the sale of the Bokor. Let me explain. As you all know, when a person, you know, a rich guy wants to give his son or his wife a car, you know, the new fancy, I'm talking like provincial Israeli, for us, BMW is a fancy car. Don't laugh at me, okay? So let's say the one wants to give his son a fancy BMW. So what does he do? Classy, gives him the keys. The key with a nice note, Finnish University, so nice, yeah? So when you give the key, obviously it means that there's a car waiting in the garage, in the garage or the garage, yeah? So now, that does not, that's not the story over here. Just because I sold you the tzemed doesn't automatically mean I include the bokor and the rest of the money is coming in the in in, in you know in the wiring. No, tzemed is tzemed and bokor is bokor. The tzemed is alone, the yoke is alone, and the cars are alone. Bokor is a bokor, lo bokor is a tzemer. If it, it's a tzemed, sorry. If I sold you the two cows, they don't come automatically with the tzemed. The tzemed is not standard thing, the yoke included in the bokor. All very nice. E everyone agrees to that. And please, no question, it's not the main part of the question. Rabbi Yudoyme. Rabbi Yudoyme says sometimes there is exception to the rule, says the Bratunura. Adomi Modin. Sometimes when I say tzemed, it does mean the cows and not just the, 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 not just the yoke. Kate said, how is that? Omer Loy, the guy that was a tzemed on the table. Yeah, let's look at a tzemed, meaning a double yoke, some cheap plastic from China worth 50 shekels. Yeah. And he says, I want to buy this semet for 200 zoos. I want to buy this piece of semet. Everybody knows it's worth 50 shekels for 2,000 shekels. Well, Hadomim Modin means money talks. The money is a way to let, is, is, is an indicator. That's the word. The money is an indicator to know what we're talking about. Hadomim Yudua, everybody knows. Shenet semet b'matayim zoos. Everybody knows that that small cement made out of wood or plastic is maybe 50 shekels, not 2,000, 3,000. If I say it's cement for two, 3,000, obviously, I don't mean just the yoke. I mean the whole Gansa Maisa, the whole Strachpatz, together with the cows, their logical rebuda, right? The money can tell you what I mean according to the, to the price. I'm not telling you car keys for 300,000 shekels. That's the price of a car. The Chachomim Oimri, Chachomim say, Say, no, money doesn't always tell, not always an indicator. Very interesting. Why? Chachomim say, sometimes a person may buy from his friend a semed of 50 shekels for two, 3,000 shekels. How would that be? Why? Chachomim believe either in different options. The one option that we care about, I'm cutting corners here. Chachomim say, mechila. sometimes a person wants to give, I know such people, myself, I was a relative of mine who was nifter. Sometimes people buy things from others for tzedakah. In other words, the guy made an okay painting. He really doesn't have what to eat. He's sort of a painter. He would give this painting maybe 50 shekels and put it in the back, back, back room. He gave him that painting 2,000 shekels because he needs it. 
So you give him much, much more because you're Michael. In other words, you want to give him a gift in the form of mechubad, the respectful way. You overprice it, merotzo, and your own goodwill, and you pay more. It's not always normal. The Chachamim says, as long as you didn't specify and you said semed, and all was a ta- the only thing at the table was just that yoke, that miskin thing of wood, but you said 2,000, maybe you bought the wood for 2,000, and the cows are not included, not necessarily. And what would Rabbi Yudah say? Ah, no. Rabbi Yudah says, no. As long as the person didn't specify his mechila, his goodwill of being mevater and giving in and being a tzaddik and being bal muster, as long as he didn't specify it word verbally, it's not on. Business is business, says Rabbi Yudah. And therefore, in our case also, it's nice that every time you came, I happened to scoop up a golden oil. I wanted to be nice, give it a nice feeling, nice, golden, pure, uh, amazing oil, Hanukkah. And that's why I did it. But as long as I didn't specify, I am giving you 100%, 100 log of pure oil, that's not the deal. At the end of the day, a surprise is waiting for you, which shouldn't be surprising you, by the way, mister. And what pure is not, one and a half is waiting in the corner. That's Rebuda. Oh, Mazel Tov, the Zoom is not happy. The Chachomim, maybe Zoom believes in Rabbi Yudah. We'll start explaining Chachomim. Zoom stops working. The Chachomim, Oymrim. Right. Now, what do Chachomim say? Ladiv Rechachomim, Osur Laarim Shmorim. Line starts with the word Osur. According to Chachomim, you're not allowed to stir up and mix up the oil with the Shmorim to bring up, stir up in a whirlpool and scoop up and sell, mix. No, it has to stay pure, 100%. 100 log pure, quality and quantity. Now, in a domim raya, ladiv chachomim also la'av shmoim, the high new time at the lomi kabel, that's the reason why the person should not absorb the loss of the one and a half percent of shmoim, and you should give him pure 100 log of pure oil. The omer lay, because the customer who's right is telling the seller, he boys the ruby, if you want to mix up the oil and stir up the oil, mi have are you allowed to mix it up? No. You're not allowed to mix and stir up and sell me murky. When I came to the store, it looked clear, and it said on the sign, like you guys were saying, the sign said 100 log. It looked very, very clear to me, and that's what I had in mind. Are you allowed to start playing games and, and, and murking it up, dirting it? Ashtonami. And now also, Loma Kabilna, I don't accept it. That was the understanding of Abaye, how Abaye explained beautifully Chachomim versus Rabiuda. Ad kan divra Abaye. I'm a little of pop, but many times the pop and Abaye attack each other. I'm a little of pop. Good? Fine. I'm a little of pop. The pop is now attacking, uh, questioning Abaye. Not attacking. The pop is suggesting that it could be just the opposite. Chachomim and Rabiuda, they say the same in the Mishnah. Chachomim say what? A person shall receive at the end of the year 100% pure and 100% amount, quality and quantity, customer. And Rabiuda says no, it's either or, right? That's what we said. Says Rav Pope, Omer Rav Pope Labaye, no, Adarabe. On the contrary, Ipcha Mistabra. I would say just the opposite. I would say, look, listen to my pshat. Says Rav Pope Tobaye is another optional pshat. Ladivar Chachomim Muter Le'Arav Shmorim. Wow, could be that according to Chachomim, who say that at the end of the year, when we get to the bottom of the barrel, then the customer is supposed to not absorb it, but he'll scream and shout. Not scream and shout. He'll insist on getting what? No, 100 log of pure oil. And yet, Chachomim could believe mutter la'ariv shmorim. That if the person wanted to the seller, he could mix up and stir up and sell him bad, not bad, but murky oil. Aye. How come if so that Chachomim say that the customer is not supposed to absorb the one and a half difference at the end? How come? The Omer lay, because now with the mechila business, it's very good. The customer can tell the seller you could have, should have, would have, but you didn't. Mideloi oravli throughout the year. Tishrei Cheshman, Kislev Teves Shvat Odor all the time. He sold me big American smile, and he sold me what? Pure oil, and he never mixed it. You never ever stirred it. That's kind of interesting. Achuli achaltli. That shows you are Moichel. That shows that according to Chachamim, you are Moichel. Just like in the story with the yoke and the two cows here too, your actions speak louder than words. And therefore, if throughout the year you gave me to understand, you let me understand, pure, 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 and originally it was 100 log, I understand it's 100 log, and you're Michael, the other option. It's not like you misled me, but you showed with your own actions, you Michael on the murky option, and you're going for the golden option, for the pure option, and pure 100%, 100 log. You showed with your own action that that's what you want. I want 
and hundred love. The people of Yuda, on the other hand, and I could also switch it the other way and say, interestingly, the people of Yuda also allowed of Shmorim. You could say, according to Yuda, really the person Dafka is not allowed to sell and mix the oil with the Shmorim, stir them up, and sell the lower quality oil. Ah, how come? If so, if according to Abuda, so nice, you have to give him 100% pure oil because you're not allowed to stir it. If so, how come then the customer at the end of the year, according to Abuda, has to suffer the loss? How come? He's not supposed to stir up the, 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 the sediments. Answers are more interesting. It's a bit of the kimta. The Omer Lay says the seller to the customer, right? I am following Rabuda in Rafopa's version. I want to make a living. Let's start from this. Says the seller to the customer, to the end customer, end consumer, I'm going to make a buck also. I'm not a liar. I just want to make some money here. To mix the to steer it, I'm not allowed to. A, Rabuda, we switched hats. Yeah? Rabuda is the one that says, if you went to the store, you saw nice golden oil, and the barrel said, that the label said, 100 log. It's 100 log. What? Pure. Okay, nice. So din to mix it, I can't mix it. Kibuli namilo mekabelt, and also the 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 shmorim. If you don't accept the shmorim at the end of the barrel, yeah. In other words, I have to give you both quality and quantity, hundred percent and pure and hundred log and everything. Then we're talking about a nukimta where he's not going to make any profit. The only profit he has is from the shmorim. Tosis explains. Rashi explains. We're talking here. The times are tough. Rav Pop is only suggesting an alternative shot. That's all to Abayi. The Shah is not necessarily always right. Could be a matzav where the Shmorim is the only difference, is the only cut that he's making. As Igmar says, Zbuni Vizdabin Tigra Ikri. You tell a person who's a child or a person who's mentally challenged, you tell him, you know, go buy from him and sell to him at the same price. We're going to call you a soicher. Like little children play a nurse, they play lawyer, they play whatever, they play shop, you know. I buy it for five shekels and it sells for five shekels. That's your children's play. In other words, says the says the wholesaler, yeah, I have to make a living. And here the Kimta is that the only profit I'm making, the cut, the difference is on that one and a half percent. So it goes without saying that although I'm not allowed to steer it, money I'm allowed to make. And that is goofy. You should have understood that that's the difference, and that's the money I'm making. And that could be why Dafka, the fear of Yuda, the one who's supposed to absorb the difference. Is the customer? Maybe let him first talk first because you have three things and you only have one. First of all, okay. they start off with this oil, not pure oil, right? This oil, and then we're going on to British commercial. Making good point, parents, our friend. What about the idea that you have to be honest with your weights and with, with weights and measurements? True, that's why the mission has standardized it. The Mishnah said Shmorim of 100 log will always be one and a half. And that's being Yosher. In other words, let's say the seller wants to be a bit of a schwindler, better playing games, you know, smart depends. He's going to say, oh, there's really 2% sediments and I have to make a living. We'll say no, one and a half. Or the other way. That's why we standardized it and said, we in Allah believe one and a half. Different countries, maybe different, different times. Begadol, for every 100 log, you have one and a half log of Shmorim. And that is the standard measure that we decided, I would really, really like to get to the Mishnah today. I'm not, no, nothing what personal. Are... Let's summarize. I can see there are questions that you're sort of holding, but let's summarize and get it right. A binder of Papa, yeah, are playing this, this game. You know, like Yaakov Avinu with his hands. In other words, a, both Abai and Rav Pop explain Rabbi Yudah and Chachomim in opposite ways. Okay? In other words, of course, there's always one opinion that says, yeah, that the seller can mix it up, mix it all up and sell you murky. There's another opinion that says, no, he's supposed to sell you 100% of 100 log all pure. There are always these two opinions. Okay? The question is, who do you pin to who? Abai was a simpler opinion all the time. Abai is very good. Abai was also good. Abai was the one which which we followed through most of this year. Abai says, Rabuda says, listen, Rabuda says to the customer, Rabuda sides with a seller, saying, you have to absorb the one and a half at the bottom of the barrel. Why? You When you said, I want this, don't speak like a three years old. You want the pure oil 100%. Say, I want pure purified oil 
of, of 100 log. You didn't say that. Well, this happens to have sediments in the bottom. You didn't see that? It's not mechiyuv to tell you. And I'm going to give you this, you know, which is really either, you know, only 18, uh, uh, 98 and a half, or I could mix it throughout the year, which I didn't, so say thank you, either or. That's a beauty. Chachamim say no, customers' rights. They're not protecting customers' rights. I don't like this word, uh, my good friend Yaakov. Says Lamaisa, is that what Belabat is protecting? It's a shy love, das bnei odom. What did both minds think? What here, chazaz, das, elion, shul chazal. And and Chachamim say, I say customers always right because you know I'm trying to make it more palatable for us. Chachamim say, who is right here? Yes, the customer. He wants this, which looks pure. And it should be pure, and he wants 100% of it, 100 log, and that's what he's going to get. That's Chachomim. Rapapa is a bit more complicated. Rapapa says, no, we can switch sides and say, no, that according to Rabbi Yehuda, according to Chachomim, Maker Adin, he could have mixed it and stirred it. He could have, but since he didn't, since throughout the year he always scooped it nice golden oil, he made me understand that he's Moichel. And he's giving me 100 log that we spoke about, and he's giving it to them in pure form. Because every time I came to his uh, 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 store, he always gave it to me what? In pure form. So he was Michael, the other option, and now should give me 100 log for oil, pure. That's Chachamim in the new version of Papa. Now comes the last sentence, which with all the respect you mixed up with other things, I'm sorry to tell you. And that is, say, says Rav Papa, according to who? According to. Rapopa, according to, to Rabbi Yuda, Rabbi Yuda says, no, could be be'etzem, me'ikra din, if not for the profit margin that he has to make, me'ikra din, you'd be right. And chinami, I would like to give you, not to mix it, I'm not allowed to steer it, I'm supposed to give you golden, and I'm giving you golden throughout the year, nice and pure and purified, and very nice. And yes, I'm supposed to give you 100 log, but you should know that you should know the market. Right now, things are tight, are tough, and I would not make any profit bechlal, zero to my own family, which is starving, if I don't what? If I don't leave behind one and a half, that's my margin of profit. That's all. He mainly he'll give him 80, 98 and a half, and you should go home. Is everybody happy? Tomorrow we're going to talk about tuck team. We didn't make it clear, but I think we got it clear. Tomorrow we're going to talk about a different type of dirt called pekatim. These are not pectin. <laughs> it also exists in, uh, in fruit. We're going to talk about the other type of refuse, which is the little things that float on top of the oil, the refuse of the garinim, of the, of the seeds. The dregs? The dregs of society. No, we're talking, there are two types. Of, the those who fall to the bottom, the those who go to the top. Atzlocho, Rabbi, have a great day. Atzlocho, the brocho, the cholen yonim.